hantavirus is a virus that's a microscopic organism that has now been recognized to cause a newly described disease, the hantavirus pulmonary syndrome. Initially, people from the Southwest were showing up with it, but now it's been found all over the U.S. This doesn't mean that it's spreading. We're just able to discover it in different states now. The reason that we can find it in these different areas is that we now have tests that will identify the disease with 100% certainty, and we have alert clinicians all over the country who are looking for it. We've also discovered that it's not really a new disease. It's an old disease. By looking at samples from people who have died of unexplained lung disease, we've been able to discover this syndrome as far back as the late 1970s. So it's been here a long time. We just haven't been able to recognize it until now. There are other hantavirus diseases found throughout the world. The viruses that cause these diseases are each transmitted by a different type of rodent. But none of the other viruses are as deadly as the virus that causes hantavirus pulmonary syndrome. In fact, over 50% of the people who get it die from it. The two universal symptoms that were seen in every patient were fever and muscle aches. These are severe pains involving the large muscle groups, the thighs, the hips, the back, sometimes the shoulder. And then about half the patients have abdominal problems, nausea and vomiting and abdominal pain. Some patients will have cough and shortness of breath early on, and some may go for a week or 10 days before they get the cough and the shortness of breath. The transmission cycle begins with the rodents who carry the virus. The virus is probably released through the rodent's urine, droppings, and saliva, just like in other hantaviruses. They transmit it or pass it on to each other, but they themselves don't get sick from it. Once it's released, it doesn't live very long, maybe a few days. During that time, a person may come in contact with the virus. The main method of transmission is when the virus enters the body by breathing contaminated air. This happens when fresh urine, droppings, or contaminated nesting material are stirred up and the virus floats in the air. Tiny droplets become airborne and then can be breathed in. Another way a person might get it is through rodent bites, but this is very rare. It is suspected that a person could get it if they touched a surface contaminated with rodent excretions and then touched their nose or mouth. Usually within one to three weeks, but probably as long as six weeks, early symptoms develop. The infected person usually has a fever, headache, and severe muscle aches. And they might develop stomach problems, dizziness, or chills. About four to five days later, the lungs fill up with fluid and the patient feels short of breath. Then they get extremely ill and could possibly die. The disease stops at the person who is infected. In other words, it is not transmitted from one person to another. We trapped rodents in and around the households of individuals who had suffered from Hantavirus pulmonary syndrome and identified the deer mouse and the cotton rat as the primary species which were responsible for these infections. The deer mouse is a deceptively cute animal with big eyes and big ears. It comes in a variety of colors depending on its age, but normally it ranges from a gray to a reddish brown. It has a white underbelly and a tail which has uh, sharply demarcated white sides. The cotton rat has a larger body than the deer mouse. The fur is longer and coarser and is typically of the color of grayish brown and can even approach grayish black. The deer mouse has one of the widest geographic ranges of any rodent found in North America. The cotton rat, on the other hand, is primarily found in the eastern and southeastern United States and extends its range all the way down to the North and South America. The deer mouse is most commonly found in woodland habitats, although it can also be found in down in desert areas. The cotton rat prefers overgrown areas which are overgrown by shrubs and or tall grasses. Although both these rodents are primarily found in rural environments, if the conditions are right, you can find them in cities. It can be hard to tell one mouse from another mouse, and you cannot tell an infected mouse or rat from an uninfected mouse or rat. 
In the future, we also expect that other Honda viruses will be found associated with other rodents. So in dealing with rodents, it's best to deal with them as if they all may be infected and use suitable precautions. As with any newly recognized disease, there's been a lot of speculation about how you can get hantavirus disease. Many people have been misinformed, and widespread fears have developed. There's still a lot we don't know about this disease, but there's some things that we do know. We know that you cannot get it from uh, kissing or hugging someone who has the disease. We know that you cannot get it from doctors or nurses working with uh, patients with the disease. We know that you cannot get it from transfusion, from blood from someone who has had the disease in the past and survived it. We don't believe it's transmitted from farm animals, pets, or insects. The only way you can get it is from exposure to infected rodents, saliva, urine, droppings, or nesting material.